What's interesting is Nick Accato says, like, he's now wearing these shirts saying it's your fault. What's interesting about him saying that it's your fault is that he's also not wrong. All right, y'all, another episode brought to you by my 30 cent homemade recyclable coffee. If it, is it really 30 cents? I don't know. I would like to break down the math, but it, I don't think it could be more than much more than I would say 50 cents for like the splash of the almond milk the coffee itself it's like when i brew it out a couple liters out of like a few tablespoons you know what i mean and then just the ice and the little bit of uh sweet uh well fake sweetener like the i i, I buy it from starbucks it's 12 dollars a bottle but it's like a liter and a half and you just use like a two caps two capfuls and then you get yourself a beautiful coffee made by yours truly by your hand and it tastes exactly how you want it because you make it. So that's awesome. But anyways, I'm back uh, by the uh, by the fields here. About to log my jog with my 6K per day. The kids are showing up for football. Maybe I'll give you a little gander at that. I'm on the front cam here. I don't know how good these front cams look these days. But as you can see, we are at the fields and it's turning into a nice day it used to look like that but the sun's coming out football's about to go down and uh i'm about to get a little sweat myself here so that's what life has been for me like lately is doing this and i know it's not the most entertaining thing it's not the best thing it's not what it all used to be and i just want to talk about that real quick in this video i see a lot of people like really being like in the comments missing the muck and that's of course, I I know that that would be the case. Like, that's what my channel was founded or off. Well, I was founded off ASMR actually, <laughs> but mixed with still some some muck aspects of in ASMR. But then ultimately <clears throat> turned into muck for the most part. So we know this. What I, what I'm saying is this. Um, let's revisit a few points from that video that I said the here's where I'm at video. Let's just like kind of revisit, reiterate, and unfold a few things just to clarify. I feel like. But I feel like there's a lot of people in the comments being like, you know, it's sad to know that it's that that the muck's over and all this stuff and and like it's just this this uh, this tone that's like I'm gone done with it forever. I never actually said that in that video. I said perhaps we can still do as I'm doing what I'm doing here. We can still hit you know maybe once a week we can hit some food stuff and the food stuff's just going to be healthier it's not going to be you know me wilding out with a fresh hot pizza pie <laughs> even though i'd love to i still love fresh hot pizza pie like don't get me wrong but this is why i want to just clarify sort of in this video about what that like the muck isn't completely over gone it doesn't mean it's never coming back because i never said that uh, I'm still into food. I love food. I love food appreciation. I love food content and things like that. But I don't like it when it's done in a uh, like disgusting, like what I said, toxic way. And some people made it extremely toxic. Okay. So I'll say this, and maybe I didn't clarify this in that video. The main reason I'm stepping away for X amount of time to just do some other stuff is because of health that's the first and foremost reason why i'm like i gotta stop because i was just getting to my like a height weight and i was not cool with it like i'm not cool with it and that's what i've been on i've been on five weeks of like extremely low carb intermittent fasting kind of like one meal a day style life like i eat like maybe like a thousand calories per day type thing going for my walks um and no diet sodas nothing like that just coffee and water so i've been extremely strict and the reason why i'm like okay well can i like how entertaining can like food videos be when literally my diet is and here's what i'll tell you and that's what i want to clarify in this video is like i mean i can still eat my normal meals with you if you want but my thing is this is like this is what i predominantly eat I've been making bok choy, like celery, bok choy, green onion, like spring onion, 
with like oyster sauce, soy sauce, uh, a little bit of, um, uh, da -da 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 -da. why can't I remember it? What's the other sauce? Uh, le it's like a lemongrass, something or other. It just adds like a nice ginger lemongrass to it. Adds a nice tweak. And with chicken, like I just cook off chicken and then I put that in there. And then I just put like toasted sesame seeds. The meal itself is like 300 calories, but it, it like it yields like a large plate of it. So I've been having a lot of that. I've been having a lot of steamed broccoli or I call it brawly flour. I mix cauliflower and broccoli. I steam it. And then I'll also just add like chicken. Chicken's just like a mainstay every day. I'll have like a chicken breast per day. So chicken breast in that, and then I'll usually make a little cheese sauce. I'll put some cheese sauce on that. The cheese sauce is like 100, 150 cows. With the chicken, the chicken breast is like 250 cows. So it's like a 400 calorie meal because broccoli is basically, you can have a whole crown of broccoli is like 30 calories. So let's just call that like a 500 cal meal. But I've been eating these like large, fibrous, green chicken veggie type meals. Um... I eat a lot of salad. I'll have salads per day, per night or whatever. Like if that's a thing, I've been making homemade soup. I've been eating some canned soups, but I make sure that they're like the, the least carby soups. Um, I eat eggs. I might have a couple strips of bacon here and there as like a, every, like a couple, like once a week or style, like in, you know, delicious treat. Um, what else do I eat? Uh, the, oh, oh yeah. Um, if, if I want something sort of carby or grainy, I buy Melba toast. So Melba toast is uh, just these little toasts. There's like there's 130 calories a pack, 23 grams of carbs in the entire pack. And it's like a multi-grain uh, little crispy toast thing. So I might have some of those with peanut butter. Um, so I've just, my diet is so repetitive and simple. And that's all good because I'm keeping it that way because I don't want to confuse anything. I just want to have a regimen and ha know what I have in the house to eat. And like, I, I eat a lot of celery, cucumber, uh, cherry tomatoes. Like I keep veggies on hand as well, just to snack on like a little veggies and dip stuff. But anyways, what I'm saying is, is like when it's out of the house, it's out of the mind. Like I don't bring anything into the house that's going to like destroy me, right? Or, or, or turn me into a crave slave because I'm on a mish and like, over this five weeks, I've been so on point. Like I've just been so strict about it. And for me, that's like, that's how I have to do it because uh, that's the mission. Like I can't, like, I don't want to flirt with Pizza Hut. You know what I mean? Even though I love Pizza Hut, it's just once you open Pandora's box, if you're on a mission and then you get the taste of that old, like, oh my God, that's so good. It's just like, it starts to like your foundation starts to crumble and then the wheels come off. So for me, it's like, I just go to the very, I just say like, this is the mission. This is the extreme. So like, that's what I have to do. Um, but I'm just like, how, how interesting is that to, 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 to make food content out of, I don't know. So you guys have to tell me like, that's my whole thing is I'm just trying to to get healthy and to be honest like i just woke up today and i looked in the in the mirror and like everything's like my upper body is like coming it's finally sucking in it's coming down the love handles are coming in my hip bones are coming back out my titties are getting less um my my crater bum is no longer cratering um you know i can i can when i have to do manscaping i can it's less like looking over the shelf and trying to find where it's at like i can just look down and everything's there and like i'm not out of breath trying to like do manscaping and stuff cutting my toenails is now easier like nothing is <laughs> nothing tastes as good as skinny feels is what they say so for me it's just like i was just reaching a you know uh what's the like a critical mass at that point and i was like you know i just i gotta commit back to the thing and you know, I, that's it. I just want to get down to X certain weight, but I can still eat healthy shit on the way and share it with you and have like those videos. So if you guys want those, I can do those. Um, but I just needed like a, a reset period and, and I needed to start this heading into what I'm doing here uh, in, in still in that format, but I, I can introduce some like healthy meals. Like I'm sure people wouldn't mind seeing that like that bok choy chicken thing that i was just talking about right and so yeah maybe i can figure out how to like 
work in low carb healthier meals and we'll just talk about stuff so there's that i'm on my mission i just want to i just want to be i want to be happy looking at myself and like feel good about myself in the mirror and wear clothes that feel good and stuff like that and to be honest with you it's weird it's like as once you start training your body to eat less and eat healthier and you like me going for these walks every day like day by day like me moving my body feels so much easier like every day i feel like i can do so much more i just feel more i just got more pop in my step like it's no joke so that's that's what's up with that as per my other things relative to the muck space, like I did say like, oh, it's like, it's like, it's kind of like this toxic thing. But when I say that, I don't mean sitting down to, to break bread, to share a meal, to create entertainment, both for myself and somebody else on the other side of the screen is inherently a bad thing. Um, whether or not, like, let's say you're having, you know, a medium pizza or a large pizza or pizza and wings, or you're having a massive salad, if it's a normal amount of food that you can eat and it's you know it's sustaining you or if it's burgers or fruit i don't care that the whole idea of sitting down to share a normal amount of food is that's fine that's cool and that's kind of like what it used to be it used to be normal and that's what i'm saying is people opportunists um you know in my experience assholes <laughs> came in and just exploited a trend, right? And they exploited the people watching it as well for their own profitable gain uh, by doing, you know, seemingly shameless or, you know, morally bankrupt things for their bank account. So that's what I mean by the toxicity of it. I don't think inherently this is a bad thing. It's just where certain people had to take it to for financial gain and to exploit it as such. Now, let me just explain it a little bit. I don't know that we need a full deep explanation, but I wanna lay it out, okay? Here's the thing. It's those who did do the whole thumbnail with the cascading fast food or whatever it is, or just the, like, the cooking a whole alligator or like a 60 pound crab and you're one person trying to eat this thing, like it just, it doesn't make sense to me, but here's why this makes you an asshole. And this is that, like, you pull up to, let's say, any fast food place, Popeye's, McDonald's, Taco Bell, and you place an order for, like, $250 of food. Well, now you've just made those workers' lives absolutely miserable. You've now changed the definition of fast food into slow food for everybody else who just wants a normal amount of food to go on about their day. So once again, you're an asshole. Now, all those animals who have been murdered, killed, all that thing, sacrificed or just slaughtered for your own satiation as food. Well, now we all know at home, you're not eating this old, cold, fast food. You're throwing it in the garbage. So now all these animals' carcasses are not going to, to their cause to satiate you as a human being. They're now thrown in the garbage for your personal uh, financial gain. And then you have to consider you're throwing that all in the garbage while there's somebody near to you, probably just down the street, who doesn't have enough to scrape together for even a meal. So they're going hungry. So, and then you throw this all away for your own financial gain. So you're in, can we guess it? Rhymes with asshole, you're an asshole. So let's think of the people across the planet who have literally no meal and are probably going to die tonight because of that makes you a i think we know the word so that's what i'm saying that space of this people who did that became that it it's 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 a multi-layered thing you're being an asshole and toxic in many forms it goes deeper than just you're treating your body bad and you bought way too much food it goes deeper than that it affects more people than just that okay so you know you, that's the aspect of that that i'm talking about now is eating on camera and sharing some time together a bad thing inherently? No, I don't think so at all. And that's what I was referring to back in the day. 
was when this all first started. It was it was a cooler space because people were just more normal. But like anything in life, it has to get big, it has to get grandiose, and that's just unfortunately the way of the world that we live in. Uh, you know, too much. Everything's too much. We want too much. We need too much. We desire too much. We eat too much. We we watch too much garbage. It's, it's all too much. It's always too much. That's that's what the whole thing of this consumerist world is. It's always about too much. Okay. So that's what I was touching on in those videos. That's it. Um, now, what's interesting is back to the too much thing and who like, let's say who's who, like, whose fault is that? So I just was like, stumbling around and i saw that this charlie penguins penguin zero he's a like a huge he's almost a social commentary slash gaming youtuber he's got a his channel is huge he always gets massive views and he's relatively like chill and kind of almost boring in a sense but his audience is extremely loyal and he does make some different content that somehow i don't know he just gets blessed by the algorithm a lot but anyways he made a video basically about Nikocado Avocado is like killing himself and stuff and just, but he didn't do it in like a harsh way or anything. He just kind of did it in a, in a, in a middle ground. Like I used to watch, like he used to be skinny and play the violin. Now he's this, what, like almost like a look at what the internet's done to this guy, like psychologically what is done to him personally. And then also like the people who watch him, what it's done, like what it's fueled and that's kind of tying into the conversation before and what's interesting is nick Akato says like he's now wearing these shirts saying it's your fault now we all know that if he didn't partake and create and do these things that it's that it uh that it wouldn't be happening so like that's it's clearly part his fault it takes two to tango of course in life it always takes two to tango when there's two sides of the fence but what's interesting about him saying that it's your fault is that he's also not wrong. And he's not wrong because those who continue to show up to the toxicity, who partake in the watching of the toxicity, who fuel the toxicity, which then turns to massive numbers, which then turns to massive dollars, then you are also to blame. If you just stop showing up to these toxic things then these people wouldn't do it anymore but you champion it or not champion it you at least you can't help but watch the and be intrigued by it so you can't stop watching so you're addicted to the toxicity and so that creates the monster the beast and that's another that's another indication of like the society that we live in because we don't champion healthy behavior through the internet we don't champion people eating healthy he tried that nikakado used to do like vegan mukbangs but he probably got like no views and couldn't make any money he didn't get any attention or eyes on him so really you think about it like whose fault is that like and then that leads you to believe is like what's the world that we live in why is why are all the corporate fast foods and the junky foods and all those addictive like foods and i love them too i've I, you know i've been loving on them why are those the ones that get it that get all the attention and that's you would have to think that probably the who, who google owns youtube and you know all those companies are tied in to to these spaces so it's like obviously those big chain foods videos are going to get pushed because they all have each other's best interest at heart, both Google, YouTube, and these massive uh, companies, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, uh, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Popeyes, Pizza Hut, all these things. But it's also all dirty food that we kind of like low-key secretly love. And, you know, some people indulge in it all the time. Some people do, do use it as a treat. And some people are like, no, that shit is like, that shit is, is death in wrappers boxes and things like that's i'll never touch that shit i just eat whole foods plants vegetables maybe some meat who knows whole grains seeds and stuff like that so it's just that that's an interesting thing to observe is the whole like 
you know, Nick Accato, like doing his angry character meltdowns and stuff. And we all know it's a character. He doesn't, this man is not unintelligent. He knows what he's doing. It's stupid what he's doing to his body. But I think he's accepted that, that he's doing that to himself for this thing for a while to get all this money. And he knows that he's psychologically manipulating people all of the time. He knows that. And what's even more interesting is from what I viewed of his videos, like he seems like a very um, productive person in the sense of like making a lot of content, running a lot of channels. He's also got like paywall content. He's got like Patreon, OnlyFans. <laughs> he's got um, like Cameo and stuff like that. It seems like he's always producing a lot of content. And also in his videos, I've noticed that like he used to, he showed one time he had this, uh, like a mukbang closet where everything was like organized to the T. He had like KFC sauces in this Tupperware. And then he had these sauces in this and like these not like everything was organized and seemingly his closets are always really organized. And then now he's eating in bed all the time, which is like crazy. Like now he doesn't have to do his big setups anymore, which I guess that saves some time. But what's interesting is like for somebody who you would think would be like a slob or something, it's he eats in a white, like his bed is white. Like all of it is white, like all his linens and sheets and duvet and pillows. It's all white. And it's always super clean. Like looks like it was, it's brand new, fresh, fresh. And I don't know about you guys, if you've ever had white bedding, you'll know how hard it is to keep it looking nice or brand new. It's like daily maintenance or every couple days maintenance to, to keep a white bed white. So I don't know if he has help or whatever, but like his bed's always seemingly like fresh and he eats in it, <laughs> like on it, like he's just eating you, you, there's gotta be sauce spills. Like there's just no way there's not sauce spills, but I don't know. It's just, it's really interesting to, to observe him, to know that he's actually quite intelligent, but he's making stupid decisions, but it's all for profit because of once again, back to the whole thing is like the audience who's driving the traffic. And you know, like, like I said, it takes two to tango. It's both his fault, but it's also the people who watch his fault which almost translates into what I was trying to talk about with this, like the world and the government shit is like, if we just stop playing the game, right? If everybody just stopped paying, like you could still go to work, but if everybody just stopped paying their bills, like how many, they can't, they don't have enough police to arrest and throw everybody in jail. Not even close. They don't, and the other thing too is like you're entitled to legal process to do you're 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 allowed due process your day in court you're allowed to fight things they would never have enough time or resources to 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 put the whole country or continent through court right like if everybody just collectively thought like we're not doing it anymore we're not fueling this anymore you just stop paying your shit. Stop paying all of it. Taxes, bills, all these things. What would they do? They couldn't do anything. <laughs> right? Like, they just couldn't do anything. The companies and everything could still run. Because obviously we want still people to, to go to work to contribute to society. Of course. We need that. But all the rest of it, the highway robbery... <laughs> Like, what would they do? So that's just like, I didn't want to get too far into that, but it's the same concept. It's the same idea. It's, it's that like, who's feeding it? Who's going along with it to make it still be a thing? It's like, it's just that massive group think. And it's so funny. Like when something like a, like a Nikocado train wreck, it's just like, people just want to have their opinion they want to have their say and somehow they feel that and this is what boggles my mind is somehow they feel that in a public comment section 
public forum message board on YouTube under a video that somehow they're being heard, that somehow their opinion matters, that somehow, you know, they're contributing to something in, in, in a, in a, in a positive way with their like, Oh, this guy's killing himself. He needs help. It's like, no shit, Sherlock. Everybody's thinking it. We don't, we don't, uh, your, your comment is getting lost in the 32,000 other comments. So really you're doing nothing. Really you're wasting precious moments of your one life on this earth to engage with stupidity, right? And so that's what really boggles my mind about all of this is, is people who think they're really contributing or doing something or they're going to make some sort of a change or it's like your minute or two minutes that you took to write that thing is just going to get lost in the eternal sauce of the internet forever it's not going to change or do or do anything you've literally done nothing but waste your own time so you know that's just another part of it it's like even the engagement that fuels this this toxicity is almost futile in a sense too it's just a frivolous attempt at something it doesn't even ultimately matter but it does make this person's uh, bank account bigger but yet you seem to dislike him and hate him and not want him to do well in life but ultimately your pointless engagement makes him more wealthy and his life ultimately easier relative to finance so it's just it's just really an interesting thing but yeah that's just another point i wanted to touch on about about that video that I made about just the toxicity of it and why I don't like to be associated with that part of it. Now, is there another part of it that's cool and fine? Yes, there's lots of normal individuals who keep it regular and chill and keep it within reason. But those people that, that keep it within reason, they're always, they're always the, like the smaller, less successful, less viewed people because we live in a world that champions buffoonery, clownery, and idiocy. So there's that. Um, and then also in that video, I just talked about obviously like the money aspect. It's, it's kind of expensive to fuel if you're not getting the views. There's that. So that kind of was a reason obviously that I wanted to take a chill, chill break here and focus on just, just not having to buy all this crazy amount of stuff. And then also, yeah, there was the whole familial, just kind of felt like I was hiding aspect to it of my life and sort of like that, sort of like a shame, uh, a shame thing involved. And, you know, there's that still stands true, but I don't think that has too much to do with really. I think that has that's a more deeper psychological issue in myself relative to 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 do with like my probably my dad and fat shaming and my my experience of being a bit heavier growing up like all like because when I was a kid and I'll make another video about all of this but when I was a kid I was like super athlete um I was skin and bone six pack all of that up until I hit puberty and then when I hit puberty I started gaining like this little middle roll in my belt like I just started getting a little chubby like I just started and then high school didn't make it any better and I got like pretty chunk and then I was chunk into my late teens early early 20s and then finally when I moved to Toronto I like lost a ton of weight and I learned how to like what it was to like maintain a body weight like I just I I learned that and I I got into like a way better slenderish type space, but I've never been like crazy fit or anything, but I definitely got to a, a healthy looking guy way. Like just like a, you know, like an attractive weight. Like when you look at yourself, you think, okay, I look good. Other people look at you think he looks good. And so, yeah. And then, you know, with gaining weight back and stuff, there's always the psychological element to that. And, and how that ties into the people around you, namely my, I think my dad is just, he's not really like, he's always kind of maintained and, and he's had weight stuff in his past. Like he used to be bigger, thicker boy at a time in his life when he was going through stuff, like going through divorce and 
he used to smoke darts and order Pizza Hut like every night and shit and drink a few beers and like just chill in his in his man little man cave in the basement when I was a kid and he got pretty big at one point but then he lost like 70 pounds and got down to 170 and he was doing triathlons and stuff so you know he's not without his own stuff at, at a time either but he's always maintained that like being overweight and overeating and eating garbage is is not like a good way to be it's like it's not a good thing in life like you should probably try to not do it and so yeah i think my my shame and stuff relative to to this muck space that's my own my own like personal life dealings relative to judgmental traumas that came from when i was younger uh being heavy like kind of heavier and being chunky and then also when you're like the i'm going too far i don't want to talk about this because this could be a whole video so well i'll save that for for that video my experience my fat my fat experience maybe we'll call it so yeah i'll just end that here i don't know i just wanted to to rap about that to to, to put it all that all on the table before i get my 6k in here to try to get back to like what i feel is nice I'm shooting for like 180 right now. I would love to clock it at 180. That'd be nice. Still quite a ways to go to get to that, but that's that's like my mission here, right? So uh, ultimately just taking care of myself is, is my first and foremost goal right now. I don't think there's anything more important than me looking feeling and looking and feeling good and and like fitting in clothes and and being happy w about myself that's it when it comes to that so like i said inherently muck not a bad thing sharing some food on camera not a bad thing it's just those who made it what it didn't have to be that for me is a bad thing i don't like it i'm not i'm not with it and it's kind of a shame that so many people are with it. It just, it, it's just, I don't know. It's interesting. It speaks volumes and uh, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I can't control what, what people are into. So there's, there's that. But uh, yeah, if you want to see me, just like we can share the healthy meals. Like if you want me to just have my, my salads with you and like my, and you know, maybe also, I can experiment with some some healthier style dishes to kind of push myself into figuring out what I can cook and eat that's that's uh that's actually good for me and like low calorie, right? And for me low carb cuz low carb works. And when I say low carb like the wrong kind of carbs, like pasta, <laughs> bread, those kind of carbs. Once I cut those out, like weight starts to fall off. Now I can you can have oranges and uh you know watermelon and all these uh, you can have fruit carbs and all because those are good carbs those are carbs that your body knows how to use right these other carbs are it knows how to use them but it's it's in a different way like your insulin spike is different when you eat the wrong carbs you have an insulin spike and it just it overloads all at once Whereas if you eat the right carbs, it's a slower time release burn, which is what you're looking for when you eat the right carbs. So, but yeah, I can, uh, if, if you're down, like the healthier meals can be a thing too, for sure. Like I'm still down to do some food content and we can chat and eat and all these things. It's, that's not a bad thing. It's just, I'm eating really, really basic, really simple, you know, no frills, and you know nothing crazy nothing crazy craveable i'm not going to make you drooling in bed at 3 a.m and want to run out to get wendy's like it's just that's not what i'm on right now so yeah anyways about to get uh about to get my 6k in i brought three hard-boiled eggs with me before this with my coffee that i didn't show you <laughs> i brought a bottle of hot so so I had three hard boiled eggs and my coffee. So now I'm getting my 6K and that's it. I just feel so much better when I, when I do, when life is like this, honestly. But anyways, till the next one.
eat good, live well, stay true.